Hey, so I finally got around to core booting my X220. Okay, now for the 14 second X220 startup. Oh man, that was... Okay, there we go. Buttons press now. Cool. So, yeah, it just boots up Grub and then holds the settings for another Grub config and then it's about up. Um, give it one more second here and... Now start Chromium. Oh my god, it's out of focus, but here, Chromium. Uh, I mean, I I'm not counting the time it took me to type that in, but basically, this, uh, there is a, there's core boot on this, and it's using, it's using the Grub payload, so it's actually starting uh, Grub up on the uh, flash ship. But I have it set where it's uh, chain loading the configuration from the uh, hard disk. So it starts up Grub on the flash chip, then takes the uh, configuration from the like uh, solid state drive in here, and after that it boots into Debian. So and then I have it set. Uh, there's some like system D like setting getty sort of thing you have to do to make it automatically log on but that wasn't too hard to figure out what was a pain was actually getting this thing to flash and compiling it so core boot requires um, some uh, non-free binaries so there's some stuff you actually have to fetch from the normal ROM and I decided it was a great idea to buy the cheapest possible sweat clip you can find on eBay and I got two of them. I got a 16-pin one also, and it was $10 shipped, but neither of them work very well. And even after, so like, I even had to solder some of the stuff down so the connections were good, but it still works, like, only one out of five times. It's kind of awful. Like, the clip physically pops off the, the chip. Um, on the X220, there's a uh, chip about here, and you just kind of put the clip on it, and... You know, and boot up the Raspberry Pi, run Flash ROM, but you'll first have to get the uh, original BIOS, take that, uh, use that to get some of the, like, you need to get, like, some of the firmware for, like, the Intel ME and some other stuff. You can use uh, other software. There's some script to neuter the ME, and you can run that, and... It'll make it to where the ME is pretty much gone for the most part, but you still need that original bit of, uh, you know, binary blob to uh, get the thing going. But rather than that, like, it wasn't too much of a hassle except for compiling core boot. But I don't know, maybe I don't think I was doing anything wrong, but even though uh, I have like, a, I was running it in a virtual box and with 12 threads and still took about two hours which doesn't sound like a lot but I was recompiling it when I made uh, changes to the grub configs and I actually haven't uh, really messed around too much with grub before so I eventually did figure it out but it was uh, <laughs> three compiles in uh, first I thought it was gonna include a grub script because you know I'm kind of a type of person that reads second, but it did not, so there was no grub configuration stuff, so it just kind of booted up to one of these, I can show you in a sec, or actually show you on here, so, oh, does it really matter, oh, that's Libreboot, which doesn't have a non-free firmware, but you press C, it, it pretty much just loaded up into a grub console, so... I mean, you can still load an operating system like that, but it's not something you'd want to do every time you restart the computer. So, I moved on to the second thing, which was, I was like, oh, Libreboot already has a working, you know, sort of grub CFG file. I haven't written one of those before. So, I went to Libreboot and just typed in Libreboot CFG and Libreboot grub CFG, and I couldn't really, I found one, but it was kind of incomplete and didn't really work, I guess, so I, I don't know if it was like a really old version or something, so I ended up having to look it up and I, I just kind of 
you can go here and press E and edit these and control K to each lines. I guess it's kind of like nano in that aspect, but you know, I just kind of went through here. It doesn't save any of these when you're in grub configuration, so I just kind of deleted that and screwed around with it till I could get it to uh, chain load the Debian configuration. And uh, here, let me see. Oh man, I, I can't even show you. It's too quick. So I set all the time down to zero. And oh, I forgot. I don't even have it going through a menu for the first one. My first grub config, there's no time delay. It's just one option to chain load the next configuration. So I don't think I can actually show you the little script, I guess. But what I had to do in a Debian, so like for some reason it won't let you. If I if I log in as a root here, it won't let you uh, edit the grub CFG. So I had to like copy the uh, directory over. So so yeah, I just had to edit the uh, grub CFG stuff, and I I guess that's my video. Uh, have a good Christmas, I guess, or it's December. It's probably a little bit early. Anyways, though, have a good one. Peace.